Another story that is gripping Washington right now, the size of our national debt. As Washington faces potentially devastating year-end tax hikes and spending cuts known as the fiscal cliff, one lawmaker says the real problem is the fiscal avalanche that looms if the government fails to deal with our massive national debt. It is now over $16 trillion and counting. Utah Republican Senator Mike Lee wrote that in an opinion, uh, wrote that in a recent opinion piece. He is a member of the Joint Economic Committee. You're from Utah, a lot of mountains there. I'm sure you know what an avalanche looks like. And the problem with them is, as you point out, you don't know when they're going to come. That's right, John. Unlike the cliff, which you can see coming, the avalanche is there in the sense that the conditions are present. You don't know exactly when it's going to hit you. And by the time it hits you, it's too late to get out of the way. That's why we've got to start moving now to change these conditions so that the avalanche doesn't hit, so that our creditors will continue to lend to us and we can continue to fund the basic operations of government. So what are the, what are the consequences if that doesn't happen, if we, get this, if, we, if we get this fiscal avalanche that you're warning about? If we continue to operate without a budget, if we continue to operate in such a way that we have no plans of getting to a balance in our budget in the next five or six years, at some point, and we don't know when that's going to happen, our creditors are either going to stop lending to us altogether or they're going to demand a much higher interest rate, a, a better yield. Once that happens, it's very difficult to control. And once that happens, our ability to borrow will be severely impaired. And there will have to be massive, draconian, very painful cuts to, to everything from defense to entitlements and everything in between. Uh, cuts the likes of which we've never seen. We can avoid this, uh, but we have to start making the changes now. We have to start passing budgets now, budgets that actually balance. You write that under the most likely policy scenario, according to the Congressional Budget Office, which is a nonpartisan organization, in 30 years, we could expect to be paying $3.8 trillion in debt every year, more than federal government operations are in total this year? That's right, John, and it's even worse than it sounds because those are 2011 inflation-adjusted dollars. In other words, the entire federal expenditures, all federal outlays for last year are roughly equivalent to what we'll be spending then just in our interest. That's not sustainable. We can't run a government that way. All right, so what do we do about it? Well, we have to start by passing a budget. Uh, we, we've had only three budgets introduced in the United States Senate. I'm one of three senators who have introduced one. My budget balances in five years. Uh, Senator Pat Toomey from Pennsylvania uh, has introduced one that balances in about eight years. Rand Paul from Kentucky also has one that would balance in about five years. We've got to get one passed. But as of right now, we have no proposal from the Democrats, at least no proposal from the Democrats other than the president's budget, which received zero votes this year and zero last year. Well, the president uh, wants to raise taxes on the wealthy, for instance. Is that going to solve the problem? Get rid of the Bush tax well, cuts? Th that's not going to solve the problem because we have to remember, first of all, there's no such thing as a tax increase that affects only the wealthy. Ernst & Young has predicted that we'll lose 700,000 jobs even if we raise taxes only on the, on the top two rate brackets. 700,000 jobs, those are, those are not CEO jobs. Those are not top one percenters. Those are people living paycheck to paycheck. The bottom line is we can't go back to the American people again and again and expect to call that a fair deal when we continue to demand more money of them, but we're not willing to change the way we spend money in Washington. Senator Mike Lee is a Republican of Utah. Some sobering thoughts there, Senator. Thanks for sharing them. Thank you.